Macroevolution involves evolution at or above the species level. So instead of focusing on changes in allele frequencies in a population, which is what microevolution does, we're now looking not only at the evolution of individual species, but also whole taxonomic groups over long periods of time. An example of a macroevolutionary change is the evolution of spore-producing plants to seed-producing plants, or the evolution of land dwellers from aquatic vertebrates. These major changes, trends, or adaptations fall under the category of macroevolution, the study of large-scale patterns in evolution. Evidence for macroevolution comes from a variety of scientific fields, including geology, paleontology, and molecular genetics. Geologic evidence includes the formation of rock layers and the fossil record. The fossil record opens up a window into what organisms on Earth looked like a long time ago, and it provides glimpses into the evolution of life over billions of years. Molecular evidence includes mapping and comparing the genomes of different organisms to look for similarities in the genetic codes. The more similar the genetic code is of two species, the more closely related they are. Scientific evidence indicates that Earth is 4.6 billion years old. The formation of Earth and the beginnings of life on Earth, however, did not occur at the same time. Before there could be either microevolution or macroevolution, the conditions for life needed to exist. The basic elements of life, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, existed on Earth long before there was life. Scientists have used fossil evidence to estimate that life has existed on Earth for at least 3.8 billion years. About 4 billion years ago, Earth's lithosphere cooled sufficiently for solid rocks and liquid water to form. Conditions on our planet were nothing like they are today. The first oceans were acidic, and the atmosphere was mostly comprised of gases spewed from erupting volcanoes, such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. The primordial soup theory suggests that life began in a body of water as a result of chemical reactions made possible by energy provided by natural events, such as lightning. These chemical reactions are believed to have produced the basic building blocks of life, organic matter that eventually evolved into early forms of life. The primordial soup theory gained acceptance in the 1950s when biochemists Stanley Miller and Harold Urey conducted an experiment simulating early Earth's atmospheric conditions. This experiment demonstrated that several organic compounds could be formed spontaneously under these conditions. Protocells are believed to be the origin of living cells. Scientists theorized that protocells contained a membrane composed of fatty acids surrounding a replicating center of ribonucleic acid, or RNA, which is believed to have been the first genetic material. The RNA world hypothesis suggests that self-replicating RNA was a precursor to DNA and proteins. The basic needs of life for the early cells were not so different from our current needs. These needs include a source of energy, a way to capture and process that energy, and mechanisms to control bodily processes. Over time, mutations of these protocells occurred, resulting in cells that replicated quickly. The ability to replicate was the key to the evolution of prokaryotes at about 3.8 billion years ago, as it allowed for the passage of favorable traits that make offspring more suited to the environment. Microscopic life forms evolved from replicating protocells, and some of these early life forms left fossil evidence. Stromatolites, rock-like structures made by cyanobacteria and other microbes, are fossil evidence of these microscopic life forms. Cyanobacteria emerged and had the unique property of producing their own energy through photosynthesis. A cyanobacteria multiplied increased rates of photosynthesis produced increasing amounts of oxygen as a waste product. By 2.45 billion years ago, cyanobacteria began producing sufficient oxygen to change the makeup of Earth's atmosphere and oceans, which set up conditions for the evolution of eukaryotic organisms. 
The endosymbiotic theory is the idea that eukaryotic cells and their organelles evolved from early cells engulfing prokaryotes. Millennia ago, a host cell and bacteria that it ingested could have become dependent upon one another for survival. Over millions of years, this relationship evolved into a permanent one. Through this evolution, mitochondria and chloroplasts arose. Eukaryotic cells evolved through symbiotic relationships between bacterial cells and proto-eukaryotic cells. This allowed single-celled organisms to develop greater complexity and form multicellular organisms, all of which lived in the oceans. Three lines of multicellular organisms evolved in water, plants, animals, and fungi. By 1,300 million years ago, fungi had become established on land, and land plants evolved by about 700 million years ago. The first invertebrate animals evolved around 700 million years ago, and the first vertebrate animals appeared around 550 million years ago. By the Cambrian period, there was a remarkable event of evolutionary diversification that filled the seas. The Cambrian explosion, which occurred 541 million years ago, was a biologic event during the Cambrian period when many lineages of organisms first appeared. It brought about the evolution of eukaryotic lineages, such as marine worms that breathe through gills, arthropods, and several predators. Scientists estimate that species biodiversity during the Cambrian explosion may have reached the level of biodiversity seen today, though the species and the environments are different. Of course, most of those species are extinct today.